High School. everyone and welcome to Rogers Community 10 Athletic Department. I'm Sean McCart and tonight the Notre Dame Fighting Irish of Welland take on the Dennis Morris Redmen of St. Catharines right here at Plymouth Park in Welland. It's going to be a great matchup as the Redmen come into tonight's action in fourth place and they are looking to actually get into second place if they can win against the Notre Dame Irish tonight's game. The Redmen are coming off a 23-0 victory against Holy Cross. Meanwhile, on the other hand, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, who are tied for second place with the West Plains Spartans, they come in here losing their first game of the season, 8-7 against A.N. Meyer. So it's going to be a great night. It's cool. It's cloudy. They are calling for rain, but no showers just yet. And now I'm going to turn things over to Jim and George for their thoughts on the game. Thanks a lot, Sean. We're just getting set to go upstairs to call this senior action between the Notre Dame Fighting Irish and the Dennis Morris Redmond. George, some second place implications on the line here today as DM takes on Notre Dame. Absolutely. It's going to be a hard hitting game. Actually, first place implications as well, because if Notre Dame wins and uh, A. N. Meyer loses, Notre Dame finishes first. Of course, this depending on tomorrow's result, the West Lane Spartans, your old club, has a shot at the top spot with a win tomorrow over Notre, or excuse me, A.N. Meyer. Yes, if uh, DM wins this evening and uh, Westlane wins tomorrow at Meyer, uh, Westlane finishes first. Irish already have lost for Brian Razzolo. They'll go to back up Loris Lucetta tonight. Can he carry the Irish offense? I'm not sure he can carry the Irish offense, but I'm certain uh, they hit hard. I'm sure they can. What are the keys defensively for Notre Dame? Uh, just their intensity and uh, clogging up the middle. These are t both tough teams, and it's going to take a real hard-nosed effort on the part of Notre Dame, considering their loss of their offensive player. On the side of the ball, the Dennis Morris Red Bull, they have to do right today to come away with the win. Well, we have a young man, O'Brien's his last name. He uh, He's a heck of a football player. played on the Ontario Regional team. Apparently, he ran the 40 and 4-6. He's one of the quality athletes in the entire district, and I believe if he puts his act together, they'll be tough to beat for the rest of the year. Dennis Morris Redman and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame coming up next on the Rogers Community 10 Athletic Department. Things obvious to kick it off again. Michael Ryan boots it away. There by Ryan. Today's game is going to be very intense, and one of the most important factors you're going to find is the least turnovers. Great power. Loris Lucetta, the Irish quarterback, calling out plays at the line, first and ten. 
They give it up the middle again. This time, not much of a gain there. Well, they're in a full house backfield. They have a flanker split right, the left end split left, and they ran a two power. Sets up second down, looks to be about seven yards from here. Second and seven for the Irish. How much of a factor is the weather going to play tonight, George? Well, it's going to create a lot of turnovers. And the team that turns it over the least is the likely team to win. They're most likely to run this outside, not inside. Second and six. Timeout, Dennis Morris. They didn't have the proper alignment on the field. They're going to have to set something up here where they run, where they set up outside. Uh, most likely Notre Dame will run this outside. Let's go, D-line, you gotta come across. Don't catch him. Still second down after the Dennis Morris timeout. Loris Lucetta comes back onto the play, onto the field with a play from the bench. Tim Ravazzolo is the lead back. Rob Rotella and Anthony Santos Stefano in the backfield. This is Rotella over the left side. Short gain there for the Irish. Let's go now. They ran a uh, full house backfield. They split the left end. They had a slot back there, and they ran outside the tackle exactly where they have to. They're about third and five right now. A little bit less than five. What would you do in this situation with the weather playing in your mind? I would run a, a, a six hole, which is an off tackle play, maybe a counter play. I don't think they'll throw the ball. Third down, four yards to go for the first down. Lucetta settles under center. They're in the same formation as last play. Complete. Smith has it on the near sideline. Gets it up to the 50-yard line. First down, Notre Dame. That's an excellent pass completion considering these conditions. Ready for game action. 
seven or eight plays. Take another look at Ryan Nava, picks up the ball in the backfield and just busts it through the middle. I call that the one hole, Jim, by the way, with a straight power. First quarter here on the Rogers Community 10 Athletic Department, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame with an impressive drive. Score of the game's opening touchdown, take a 7-0 lead. Ryan Nava now set to kick the ball away for the Irish. An important factor here will be to keep the ball and not fumble it. Deep on the right side. Dino Lavelle can't handle it. The ball's on the ground. So the Redmen put in the same situation as the Irish, forced deep in their own territory. They'll start from almost near the... They're starting on about their own three-yard line. They're in a double wing formation. Straight off tackle, stopped at the two-yard line, by the way, Jim. Tough field position for the Redmen, second down. Backed up to about their own two yard line, brings up second and 11. It wouldn't surprise me to see O'Brien throw the ball in this situation. Dennis Morris quarterback, Mike O'Brien, number 17, a player you spoke about in the opening. Yes, he's an excellent athlete, great speed. He's got Robert Hill split wide right. He's going to put it up. Hill's the receiver. Almost a great catch as Hill went up to try and make the play, but right there on defense, Mike Fishley to break it up. Actually thrown very well, Jim. Uh, that ball could have been caught. I think if he had run instead of jumped for it, he could have caught that ball. They're in a third and about eight situation right here. Third down. And about 11 as the officials now confer over the ball. Oh, excuse me, Jim. I thought that was eight. It is 11 yards, Jim. Watch your fish, watch your fish. No problems at all here working in the rain. Plymouth Park and Welland as the Redmen trail the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame 7-0. An impressive an drive for the Irish to open on the... Third down, O'Brien hands it off. Big hole over the left side. First down for Dennis Morris. He ran a counter there, Jim. He faked to the right side and ran a counter to the left. Excellent play call.
appeared to be Chris Timperio on the carry. That opens up the Redmonds offensive playbook a little bit though now that they're quite not so quite backed up to their goal line. Absolutely, but I got a feeling that O'Brien will throw from anywhere on the field at any time. He's this, that kind of an athlete. This time two receivers go to the right side. They've split the right end. They got a slot back and the left flanker split. Straight power dive. Right up the middle for a nice gain goes Robert Hill. He picked up about five yards, Jimmy's second and five. They're in a twin right formation right now with a flanker split left. High backfield. O'Brien hands off up the middle. Stuffed there by Rory McDonald. That was a five power, Jim, as I call it. They look like they're a bit short of a first down. They have a back, oh, it's a first down. They have a back lead through the five hole and the follow up by the tailback for a first down. O'Brien pitches it out. And unable to get the corner now, does. Nice run. Turned the corner there very well. They tossed right with a split right, which is an excellent call. He tight roped the sidelines there and picked up maybe a first down here, Jim. Nick Lavertier looked as though he was going to get pinned on the sideline, but turns the corner and gets the first down. I don't think I can use it anyway, because I can't handle it with them. I was all prepared. A nice big game, but a loose ball. And the Irish come away with it. Number 46, Steve Valovich with the recovery. He's one of their linebackers. Jim does an excellent job. Stay with the ball. That way you'll get used a lot more. I'm okay with the hand mic. It looks like they called the ball down by contact with the ground. So Dennis Morris is going to keep the ball. And on the carry. Redmond operate first and ten from about their own 47-yard line. O'Brien in the shotgun. Chased into the pocket, and O'Brien gets dropped for a huge loss. Kurt Morrison in there on the stop, as well as Tim Ravazzolo. They sack O'Brien for a huge loss. Some things you might look for here, Jim, is a screen pass, a draw. Certainly they won't run anything inside the tackles here unless it's a counter. Second down and about 23 as O'Brien looks over the field. Quick give in the backfield and Rory McDonald in there to make the stop. They split their flankers and try to run a five power, which is between the tackle and the end. Dino Lavelle gets stuffed for a loss. Yes. 
Lavelle heads over to the sidelines. Mike Clutterbuck joins the backfield for the Redmen. Both ends are split here, Jim. Give up the middle and still fighting is Clutterbuck before he's finally taken down. Well, the sack on O'Brien drops the Redmen for a huge loss. They can't pick up another first down, brings up fourth down, and will force the kicking unit out for Dennis Morris. That call surprises me, Jim. I can't understand why they would run a play inside the tackles when they're third and, and long, like about 20 yards. Sounds like a play right out of Marv Levy's playbook. Absolutely. They should have gone to something special like a screen or a draw or one of the passes they threw a few minutes earlier. O'Brien also handling the punting duties for Dennis Morris. He'll boot this one away. The Notre Dame uh, receiver is far... I was going to say he's too deep, but that was an excellent punt. And Nava fields it, takes it up the right side, now cuts into the middle. Ryan Nava with some room, gets it up to about his own 49-yard line. The Irish take over, leading 7-0. Not very good tackling on the part of DM here. That was an excellent return. They're on about the 50-yard line, Jim. So the Irish take the ball for the second time in this game. Loris Lucetta set to lead the charge. Fishley goes in motion. Lucetta turned around to hand the ball off. There was nobody left there. Turned around a good drop by the DM defense for a two-yard loss. Either Lucetta turned the wrong way or the backs ran the wrong way. It seems to me that Lucetta made a mistake as all three backfielders ran the same way. It's second and ten. They mark it right back at the original line of scrimmage, second and ten. Notre Dame comes out in a full house backfield, splitting the left end of flank or right. Lucetta tries to hand the ball off. Now he carries it to the far right side. Good enough for the first down and more. Lucetta still running. Lucetta's gone down the left sideline. One man left to catch him. Lucetta takes it inside the 10 before he's taken down by Robert Green. But if you look back towards the 45-yard line of Notre Dame, there's a flag on the field. Illegal procedure. That was a broken play anyway. The backs were moving very early, and I believe that's what the call. They were too close to the line of scrimmage. Looked as though all three backs got up to the line of scrimmage before the snap. One of them must have crossed. Absolutely. You must be at least a yard off the heels of the guard, or that's a penalty. Spoils a huge run for Lucetta, though. Some nice moves taking it over the right side, then breaking it back into the middle. That'll make it second and 15, Jim. Notre Dame is playing a six-man front, Jim, and they're using three linebackers and three defensive halfbacks. They've changed to a five-man front now. Second and 15. Met in the backfield, a huge hit. That's a blitzing linebacker, Jim, that came through the what I call the two-hole. That's the end of the quarter as well. Santa Stefano gets stuffed at the end of the first quarter after one quarter of play. Notre Dame leading Dennis Morris 7 to nothing. Well, I can't get the, yeah, I can't see my, it's all soaking wet. You 
Notre Dame on a, on a third and 15, it looks like, Jim. Third and 15 now for the Irish as we start the second quarter. Lucetta hands off to Smith over the right side. Picks up a block, loses a handle on the ball, and it's recovered by Robert Hill. Ruled down. Hill picks up the loose ball for the Redmen. That was a reverse play they ran, Jim. They had an inside handoff, and if the boy hadn't fumbled the ball, he might have gone all the way. DM takes over on about the 51 yard line of Notre Dame. They rule Robert Hill down by contact. There's a rule in intercollegiate in high school that whenever you go down on the ball and your knee touches the ground, it's a dead ball automatically. So Hill's down, O'Brien starts all over again. This time he hands the ball off to Dino Lavelle. He's met at the line of scrimmage, maybe dropped for a yard loss. It appears to me, Jim, like the front four of D Notre Dame are handling the, the DM offensive line as they're not getting much of a push. Well, a good surge by the Irish defensive line also makes some room for some linebackers to pop some holes. Absolutely. Whenever they do that, it leaves open a lot of blitzing holes. And Notre Dame is used to blitzing. Second and 11 for Dennis Morris. O'Brien. That was a Hands counter. Off to Lavelle. That was a counter play they ran earlier for a first down uh, on, in the three hole, as I call it, on the left hand side of the line. Lavelle picks up about five on the carry, sets up third and seven. Look for something outside here, Jim, or a pass. Maybe a screen pass, even. They're in a double wing formation with a slot. Quick give up the middle. Clutterbuck can't get the first down. Another Brings up another fourth down situation for DM. Another surprising call to me, Jim. I don't understand why on third and seven or eight, you run a straight dive play. You're running right into the strength of, of the Irish. It's fourth and about two and a half, three yards. And it appears they're going for it, Jim. Redmond going to go for it on fourth down. I can see O'Brien carrying this himself. Instead, gives off to Lavelle. Looks to be good enough for the first down. He ran an off tackle play there, Jim. It's the uh, five hole on the left-hand side of the line. Dino Lavelle picks up the first down for DM. They continue to move the chains, trailing 7-0 here in the second quarter. It's first and 10 on the 40-yard line for DM. Robert Hill goes in motion to the right side. O'Brien hands it off. He faked the dive there, Jim, and ran the six hole. It seems to me that they're not throwing as much as I thought they would, even in this rain. He gained Nick about Liberty four yards. The carry. Picks up four, second and six. DM is second and six. Handoff up the middle. Clutterbuck bounces it outside. Smith straight on him and gets him out of, out of bounds. But a big carry for Mike Clutterbuck. Should be enough for another Redmond first down. He ran a dive and popped outside on that, Jim, and made considerable yardage. 
Clutterbuck moves the chains for the Redmen, first and ten. Their first sniff of deep into Irish territory. They're in an eye backfield, Jim. That's another counter play, by the way. Laverdier goes through for a couple. Second down for Dennis Morris. Looks like it's about second and seven, Jim. This time they pitch it out wide. Laverdier cuts the corner. No signal from the official. Now they do. Touchdown, Dennis Morris. They've cut the Irish lead down to 7-6. to six. Extra point upcoming. They ran a toss right there. They led with their fullback, Clutterbach, and the tailback carried the ball for a touchdown. It was very wide. Laverdier gets the end zone. Dennis Morris on the board. They'll now try to tie it up. O'Brien will attempt the convert. High snap, but O'Brien bangs it through. Dennis Morris has tied this game, reaching about the midway portion of the second quarter. And two fairly controlled drives for each team. Well, considering the elements, those are both excellent drives. We've only had, I think, one turnover in the game, and that's not bad when, when you see this rain coming down. And the one DM fumble that the runner was ruled down by contact, and then the one loose ball here for the Irish. They gave it back to the Redmond. Dennis Morris now on the board. We're tied at seven. It appeared at first, Jim, like the Irish were going to run away with this game, but DM has come back, and they're going to challenge. Mike O'Brien, who also quarterbacks and punts, will kick it away for the Redmen. Short kick, fielded it by the Irish. And a big hole. Ed O'Neill takes the ball on the short kick, gets it up near the Notre Dame 50, so the Irish start with good field position. They're on about the 49-yard line. That was an excellent return by a lineman, I believe. The Josie line, let's turn it up now. Hey, Smith. You come, Smith, you come hard. Irish split their right end, and they're in a flanker split left, a full house backfield. Lucetta to Santa Stefano. He picks up maybe a yard on the carry. There was a linebacker blitz on that, Jim, and he ran right into the hole that the Irish were running. There's an injury on the field. Frank Hagar down for the Dennis Morris Redmond. The momentum seems to have changed the hair, Jim. Looks like DM is coming back a bit. DM's firing off the ball just as fast as the Irish were to start this game. They're now getting off on the snap and making some big stops. Someone's going to have to make a big play here. A coach's call, a fumble. Those are the things that will turn this game around. He seems to have an arm injury, Jim. Frank Hagar comes off favoring his right arm. They have a second and nine, Jim, and I wouldn't be surprised to see the quarterback handle the ball here and keep it himself. Lucetta still has the three backs in the backfield, one receiver on each side. Lucetta had some trouble with the snap. He'll run it himself. 
He was going to run a toss left with a full house backfield leading, and he just didn't get a handle on the ball, Jim. It's third and about seven, Jim. Big third down play for Notre Dame. Lucetta is going to put it in the air. As Smith over the middle, ball through his hands. Very difficult to handle. The pass was right on the hands, but this weather makes it awful difficult. Serge Papineau was right there defensively for the Redmen. It wouldn't have been enough for a first down. Now it sets up fourth down, a punting situation for Notre Dame. It definitely feels like the momentum of the game is switching here. There's another injury on the field. Ned O'Neill, player who ran back that last Redmond kick, got the Iris in good field position. He comes up, looks to be favoring his left arm. Greg Palovich checks in to take Ed O'Neill's place. Santo Stefano back to punt it. Irish have an onside person Steve, as well. Steve Smith lined up onside. Now Irish back off a second on onside player. Santo Stefano kicks it away. Ball's loose on the ground. Picked up there by Robert Hill. He's going to try and take it to the right side. Fishley down there to make the play. He made an excellent recovery, Jim, there. They could have had a problem. Hey, Darryl, Darryl. One of the only teams in Division I football that does that in a punting situation is the Irish lining up two players in an onside position. Is there an advantage or disadvantage to doing that? Well, I, I think if I were coaching on the opposition, that I would try and block one of their punts when they split that many people out. It's pretty tough. You just don't have enough people to handle all the people coming at you. You're starting to short out. You might have to use the mic only now. The M comes out in an eye backfield. Yeah. Go, bro, yeah. That was a straight dive play to the fullback, I believe, Jim. Let's go now, line. Let's go. Butterbuck with the carry. Beautiful, Mike. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That was a first down carry. It's first and ten. First down for Clutterbuck. O'Brien again resets the offense. They try the same thing again, this time for not much of a gain. Clutterbuck picks up about three or four. Not a bad carry considering it was the hole was plugged up. Clutterbuck appears to be an excellent back. I've never seen him play this well before. I've only seen them play one other time. Ryan tosses away the towel. That's a straight power six. Clutterbuck leading the blocking and the tailback carrying. Dino LaBelle on the carry. I actually believe, considering these conditions, Jim, that both of these teams are playing extremely well. These are just awful conditions to play in. 
Pitch it out to Lavelle. He's going to bring it around the near side. That was a that was a power toss left. Clutterbuck making an excellent block on the corner. Is there a number, sir? It appears the penalty is against DM. It's a holding call against DM. That'll move him back 10 yards. Let's go, line. Come on, Make it third and about 15. This will be an interesting call. The last few times they've run a dive play on this or a counter. Let's go, Eli. Come on now. Let's go, Eli. Let's go, Eli. There appears to be movement on the line there. And it looks like DM is going to be penalized five yards for illegal movement. Back to Brendan up here. even farther. 26. 26. It'll make it third and about 25. Let's go, Come on now. The best play call here is a safe call. They're better off not to turn it over and just kick it away. Dino LaBelle with a nice run over the left side gets it almost up to the new the original line of scrimmage. DM played it very safe there. Uh, really good call, I believe. Just running an off tackle play, they'll now kick the ball away rather than make a huge mistake on a turnover. Okay, hold on, hold on. Maybe you want to see it. Oh, we need one more? Ryan Nabbitt drops back to about his own 45-yard line. The one advantage DM has in this game is that O'Brien's an excellent punter. They left Houston in there, Mike. Ryan gets the kick away. Nava steps up to near midfield to pick up the bouncing ball. It was a short Let's pick it up. Over midfield, Nava with some blockers down the right side. Nava run out of bounds by the punter inside the five yard line. O'Brien with a nice stop, but a great run back by Ryan Nava. He appears to be on about the one and a half yard line. I thought there was no yards on that last play as well, Jim. Very close, the officials right on the scene. Nava able to pick up the ball. And then with a quick couple of moves in midfield, just streaks down the right side. The punter was the last man that has a chance at him. We've got an injured Redmond player at midfield. Braden Smith is the injured Redmond player. Smith makes his way to the sidelines. Once he does, the Irish will go to work on offense, knocking on the door. It just appears to be a leg injury. The Irish should not do anything fancy here. They should run a straight power here and just ram it over. First and goal from about the two. Three backs for Lucetta. That was the fullback carrying the ball. He appears to be short. No, I didn't go in. I was out of bounds. Let's go! 
People like that. Hey! Get the fuck out of here. What do you think? Abbott checks back into the offense for the Irish. Joe Sorendi heads to the sideline. The ball is on the one yard line. I don't know that fight air it. DM calls a timeout with the second down play coming. This is an important goal line stand, but I would be very surprised if they hold the Irish out. I've been trying to tell him to switch and just go back. Think the Irish will stay somewhat conservative at the goal line or do you think they might try and play some trickery no I, I wouldn't i believe the dm will go into the gaps they'll fill all the gaps they'll have the linebackers up tight and i think they should just be straight ahead football if they can't take it from a yard they, they don't deserve to put it across if they try and run something outside jim what they what they do to themselves is put themselves in a position to lose a lot of yards if they go straight ahead which i call north and south they have a better chance of scoring. This okay, time, I don't I'll believe Notre Dame will use just a straight dive. They'll use a power formation, run it from a power. Hey, Ida! Ida! Make the pile! Make the pile! Don't let him through! Yeah, right. That's exactly what they did, Jim. They ran a power six. There's flags on the play, though. Santa Stefano gets stuffed. Penalty goes against Dennis Morris. Offside. There's. There will be no gain on this play because they're only one yard from the line of scrimmage and the ball must be at least a yard away. It will just be a replay of that down. A replay of the down, second and one. Let's go, boys. Pick it up, man. Let's go. They've tried the right side twice now. Don't be surprised if they don't go left. Let's go, two top. Let's go, two top. The Irish working with not a lot of time on the clock, tied at seven. And a timeout called by Notre Dame. One minute. Loris Lucetta heads over to the bench to talk things over with the coaching staff. Not a lot of time left to play hey, here Ramsey, in the first Ramsey, half. The Irish Ramsey. obviously want to get on the board here. There appears to be almost a, just a bit over a minute left. And you're absolutely right. They've got lots of time. There's no need to make a mistake here. And the coach made, makes a good call by calling a timeout to make sure they call the right play. I think if they go to a long count here, that they might be more successful rather than on the first sound. DM is playing this very tough. Best of uh, times. Or out all the way. The yard marker says second down. Lucetta lost the handle on the snap. What happened there was a quarterback sneak to the left hand side. All the backs motion left. They punch it in for the touchdown. The Irish now set to line it up for an extra point. 13 to seven, Notre Dame. The movement by the backfield going left made the linebackers take notice. And so Lucetta's quarterback sneak seemed simple. Abba punches that one up and through, and it's 14-7 Notre Dame, late going to the first half. Excellent pickup by the holder. The ball bounced to him, and he got it up there just in time. The minute flag is up. Well, with the minute flag up, one last gasp here in the first half for the Redmen, trailing by a touchdown. Chance here with maybe a... A slip tackle that maybe tie this game up before the half. If I were coaching on the uh, red side right now, Jim, I 
I would try to run this back, certainly, but if I don't get good field position, I would just take the score as it is and run some straight-ahead plays and make sure I go in only down seven. Kevin Moniz is split left. Dino Lavelle to the right. Ryan Nava will kick it away for the Irish. Nava puts the ball in the air. Moniz is going to field it. Over his head and into the end zone. Down near the goal line. Redmond pick it up, run it up towards the 10, almost out to the 15 before Moniz is stopped by the Irish kick coverage. I believe that's the second kickoff that he's mishandled. Kill the clock and go in seven points down. There, salad ball. Let me do it up. Look at that. One last chance for the Redmen before the end of the half. Obviously, the last thing they want to do here is turn the ball over. I don't think he did that bad. I mean, at what price? Like, you know, you want to put it on looking like hell, everybody knowing the equipment got drank. Lavelle is the deep back. That's a hell of a good job, man. It's using the peanut. They give it to Lavelle. He's met at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard on the play. Not much more. A great play by the left guard. They seem to be in the gaps there, so they're trying to cut off any of the inside stuff. Right now. They're, all, they're pretty soaked. Yeah. They're running the eye backfield down there, Jim. There was a counter play on that one. Give a gain appears to go to Lavelle. The counter play is when you fake to the right and give it to the back on the left hand side of the line. And that's half time. That's it. The end of the first half, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame lead the Dennis Forrest Redmond 14 to seven. Ryan Navas, late first half run back all the way down to the one, one and a half yard line. Sets up an Irish touchdown from there. Notre Dame leads it 14 to seven. Right now, let's go down to the field and Sean McCart for some recent highlights of Division II action. You're watching. 